Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is DOE 3022 Communicative Language 2, Week 2 Lesson, with me, Puan Ida Sarani binti Muhammad Isa. The course learning outcome is to describe a product or service effectively by highlighting its features and characteristics that appeals to a specific audience. Let's recap week one. In the previous lesson, you have identified the definitions of product and service and why is it important to know the products and service in your field of study. Next, you learn how to describe products and services using descriptive adjectives. And products and services can be explained by describing its function, characteristics or specifications and features or benefits. The purpose of a product description is to supply customer or audience with important information about the features and benefits of the product so they're compelled to buy or to use the service. Well, let's watch the video. This is an advertisement, so look out for what the product that is being advertised. Hey guys. Hey Scott. Great graduation party, sweetie. What are you doing? Ah, I'm taking a picture of these ribs with my new GS4. Have a smell. I smelt the ribs. Come on, you don't be a woman! Do it, do it, do it, do it! Do it. <laughs> these ribs are insane. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yo, Scott, what's up, man? You gotta be kidding me. That's how you answer it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, please. Okay. Oh, got it. Thanks, buddy. You want it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Here, I want to share. Can I share too? No, yours doesn't do that. Wow. You got the whole flop in one picture. Hey, you nailed it. I nailed something. So some smartphones are smarter than other smartphones. Exactly. What are we doing with these phones? Call your phone with my phone. Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Introducing the Samsung Galaxy S4. The next big thing is here. So some smartphones are smarter than some smartphones. In this video, you have to watch a comparison between the same product of different brands. So in products, you can make comparison and a product can be better, smarter or more advanced than another product. In this lesson, you will learn to differentiate features, characteristics, and functions of products or service. Comparison is one of the most critical activities audience or customer do in choosing desired products or services. In many cases, it's necessary step before buyers purchase something, they would research on the product and make comparison between the other products or service brand. And lastly, they will purchase the one that has appealing features and characteristics of their needs. The basic language used in showing comparison and contrast is using comparative and superlative adjectives. Adjectives can compare two things or more than two things. One way to describe noun is by comparing them to something else. When comparing two things, you are likely to use adjectives like smaller, bigger, heavier, more interesting, and less expensive. Notice the ER ending. 
and the words more and less. A mistake that both native speakers and non-native speakers make is using incorrect form comparative adjective. See the sentences below for an illustration of the common error. Is a laptop is more large than is a laptop. Is a laptop is larger than is a laptop. So what makes the first example wrong and the second right? There are a few rules that explain this. For adjectives that are just one syllable add er to the end. This explains the previous example. For two syllable adjectives ending in y, change the y to i and add er. And for two syllable adjectives not ending in y, and for all three or more syllables adjective, use the form more plus adjective. These simple rules make it easy to tell when you should add er or IER and when you should use more plus adjective. When comparing more than two things, you're likely to use words and phrases like smallest, biggest, tallest, most interesting, and least interesting. Notice the EST ending and the word most and least. Make sure you use the proper ending or superlative adjective when forming these superlatives. The examples illustrate the correct form. Dust donuts are cheaper than Dunkin' Donuts and Big Apple Donuts. If there were only two donut shops, we could use comparative cheaper here. But because there are three donut shops, we need a superlative. So, Dust Donut are the cheapest, Dunkin' Donuts and Big Apple Donuts. Remember that adjectives ending in Y change the spelling when EST is added. Perform these superlatives change the Y to an I before adding the EST ending. As illustrated in this example, the word easy. Drop the Y and add IEST. Easy will become easiest. It is important to note that they are irregular adjectives. You have to memorize because they don't follow the rules above. Some of the common irregular adjectives are could, you will say well, better, the superlative form is best, bad, or the superlative form badly, worse, superlative form worst, and less, quality form, least. You can also use other form of comparison shown in the diagram. A little, slightly, somewhat, moderately, significantly, considerably, substantially, much, far. Apart from using comparative and superlative adjectives, you can use sentence connectors or linking words to show contrast of products or service. For example, the word however, although, or despite. Linking words, contrasting ideas. For example, but or however. With Food Panda, you can order food using laptop through its desktop website or your phone through its mobile app. However, with Grab Food, orders can only be placed through its app. While Grab has a desktop website for its food delivery service, it doesn't include an online ordering system. But is more informal than however. You can use however at the beginning of a sentence but you can't use but at the beginning of a sentence. The next linking word, although or even though. These linking words are the same and they both follow by a subject plus verb. For example, in our test, 
His earbuds sounded pretty good for the money, but in comparison with the one more earbuds, they sounded blurrier in the guitar range, with less defined bass, and syllables were more intense. Although they fit as securely and comfortably, the shorter cable that connects the earbuds could tug a little bit. Next, despite or in spite of. These linking words are the same, and they are followed by a noun or, or a gerund. In the heart of Brussels, but in spite of all the calmness, the Noga Hotel is a small hotel full of charm localized in the St. Catherine district. While, whereas, or unlike, these linking words are used to make contrast. While and whereas are usually used between two complete phrases. Unlike is typically used with only a subject. For example, the District 21 theme park has 10 attractions, while there are over 20 rides and 70 Lego models at Legoland Water Park. So make sure you slather on the sunblock because you'll definitely be spending the entire day at this park. Let's watch a video on product comparison. The bone conduction technology and open ear design of Aftershock's headphones allow athletes to hear music without muffling encouragement from a cheering crowd or sounds of the city. The titanium are entry level headphones. The air are for elite athletes. Titanium repels sweat, sound crystal clear, and stay in place during workouts and training. Aftershock's kept those features in the air and made the new headphones lighter widened the dynamic sound range, and lifted the headband for a more comfortable fit. Both headphones give access to the best of both worlds, music and atmospheric sounds, without resorting to have one earbud flopping in the wind. Hear the sounds of the city, golf course, or mountain trail while wearing the titanium. Hear environmental cues and chat with other endurance athletes while training for triathlons and marathons while wearing the air. Can you identify the linking words or the comparative or superlative form of adjective mentioned in the advertisement? Next, let's look at the lesson on ask for and make clarification on products and service. There are all kinds of situations where you might need to ask clarifying questions. Sometimes we need clarification when we want to get a better understanding of a product or service. Asking clarifying question shows that you are actively listening and want to understand. There are three types of question, which is direct, indirect, and question tag. Direct and indirect questions are used to ask for information we do not know. While question tags are generally used to clarify or confirm the information you think you know. Each of these three question types can be used politely, but certain indirect forms are more formal and polite than other type of questions. One form to avoid when asking for things is the imperative form, saying, give me that. Instead of, you could say, could you give me that? So it puts you at the, the place where you are not being rude. To learn more about how to ask polite questions and use each form correctly, let's look at the next slide. Direct questions are either yes, no question, such as is it available in blue color, or information questions such as where is it made from? Direct question asks for information immediately without including extra language, such as, I wonder, or can you tell me? Some examples of direct questions are seen in the example. Where is the origin of the product? 
are there any free accessories that comes with the device? How long is the free maintenance service? And what are specifications of the product? So, how do you make direct question light? Direct question can seem abrupt or even impolite at times, especially when asked by a stranger. For example, if you go up to someone and ask, Does this work on Android phone? What's the size of the product? Can you, sh can you show me the model? Are there any stock? There is nothing wrong with asking questions in this manner, but to sound more polite, it's very common to add excuse me or pardon me at the beginning of a question. For example, excuse me, does this work on Android phone? Pardon me, what's the size of the product? Excuse me, can you show me the model? And pardon me, are there any stocks? In informal situation, you could use the word can in a direct sentence. Can is considered to be incorrect for written English in particular because in the past it was not a word used when asking for something. Saying may I have instead of can I have is preferred in some places. Questions with can are made more polite by using could or would. Using can, could and would. The example. Excuse me, can you help me to find the product? So if you want to be more polite, you can say, Excuse me, could you explain the function of the product? Or you can also use would to make the question more polite. For example, would you mind explaining the product specifications? Here are some other useful tips to use polite expression before WH question to ask about verification of products. You can use polite with what? For example, excuse me, what is the product or service? Excuse me, could you clarify what is the function? Would you mind telling me what are the features characteristics of the product. Using polite plus where. May I know where is it from? Next, polite plus when. Excuse me, when was it produced? Pardon me, when is the expiration date? And how? For example, would you mind explaining how to use it? May I know how much it costs? That's all for the lesson. If you like the content, give me a thumbs up. Do subscribe to get latest contents and updates on English lesson with me. Thank you.